We're going in, guys. This is Brian Supra. He wanted this manual trans tunnel conversion in there, which is cool that Toyota makes this, and it helps, but then look at what Joe just had to do right now to make this all happen. He had to pull the entire dash out of the car because he needs to get to that area right there. See how flat it is? Remember I was telling you it's a small rectangle? That's a small rectangle, but it's really flat. So when you put the V160 trans in there, you would have just had to cut up, because this is where it would be flat down here, and just go right across down there. So you would have had to cut like this big hole out, and maybe even up here, because the stuff interferes up there. But Brian wanted to do it the right way, so now we're gonna cut out the automatic version of this guy and then weld this in. So what you do is you drill these spot welds. Let's say you're doing this at your house. You never did this before, I'm gonna guess eight hours. We will probably do it a little quicker, but it's not an easy task because first you gotta get to that, then you drill it out, then you take a wire wheel and grind out some of the tar that's on the underside of the car, prep this metal, and where you've drilled out, then you can just spot weld from this side through to this. Then you have a manual trans tunnel and a super, but no easy task, so Joe's under the process of making all that happen. And after he does that, he's gonna install the manual pedal conversion on this chassis. Whoa, they already have a hole. We just got lucky. Look, there's already a grommet. What do we have to pull out of there? Well, there's a wire added. It's like stereo wire. So we might have to change that around. But we have holes happening, so we'll just add that to his list. There's always surprises like that. This is a small surprise, if you ask me. It's cool they already drilled that out. The reason I was looking in that corner is because it's opposite. Opposite. We would be in this corner, but Sorry, I'm not a right hand drive guy. So, anyway. That's where we're gonna be. You gotta drill two holes still. Hopefully yeah. the grommet's the right size for the master to go through. Should be. This will be a long process. While that's happening, Beach is over here getting the trans ready to go on the motor and then doing like new um, coil packs, new spark plugs, got the fuel rail off. He's gonna put a radium fuel setup in this car. And then he has some ID1000s going in. This is batch fire, so we're gonna do the other kind of coil packs, like I said, but then we needed the brackets from uh, non VVTI, so we got some used coil brackets that we could sell them. And we're prepping them because you gotta grind a little bit of this edge here because it is sideways down in there. A little 45 degree cut angle on the side of the valve cover. But on a non-VVTI, there's no like side cut or anything. It's just straight, flat, and the coil pack would bolt like in there, but kind of interferes on the VTI, so we kind of modify it so it'll work. Hopefully we get the motor in tomorrow, maybe the following day, but we'll keep you guys in the loop. Oh, it's Renee. What are you doing, Renee? Um, it's work. Up stuff. <laughs> so check out all those parts that Joe had to remove just to get into where he needed to be. It's like the hole inside of the car. Jeez. Okay, but it's worth it. Because now this trans tunnel that we were talking about earlier is in place. It's up that, you know, inch and a half more. Everything lines up. No weird stuff happening. Thanks to Toyota, they made it easy to do that. And Brian will be happy that he chose to do that. Even though we had to remove everything, and it's quite the process, now he has a real six-speed Supra when we're all done. Next up, the pedals. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, they could check out the old one. So that's what we removed. Instead of just cutting a big, huge hole right here, which would have been pretty ugly, and I don't know what you do, build another trans tunnel there, which would be way harder than just spot weld drilling and welding. It's a pretty cool thing that you get to do. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, this is a Supra. Yes, Joe's yelling, I like it when he yells. This is Juan's other Supra. It was on the lift the other day, we were doing some stuff to it, like a ACT clutch, the turbos were leaking, front main was leaking, cam seals were leaking, so it was kind of a lot of like an oily mess. 
He needs to get this roadworthy, nice and happy. He'll probably drive a little bit and then put it up for sale. Well, probably once he starts driving it, he's not gonna wanna sell it. That's what's gonna happen. So anyways, we found a bunch of like cracked vacuum lines or like they're a little too loose. So it was like the boost wasn't working correctly. So we're fixing some of those. We're gonna go drive it again and make sure everything is like feeling smooth and happy. But in the meantime, Check out that in there. So, Brian bought a VVTi, like I told you. We were doing the V160 in a Supra, and then boom, Borg Warner EFR. 8374, like a 650 horsepower package. If you had E85, maybe like a 500 horsepower package on pump gas. We installed some ID1000s that he supplied today on this radium fuel rail, and then he had chose this direct mount fuel pressure regulator from radium and then we're waiting on one fitting but then it'll have his gauge right here that'll show what his fuel pressure's at once the motor's in we'll put the upper intake manifold on but we're leaving it off so we can have access to this area we need a, a 45 degree right there then we put some brand new coil packs in here from toyota these are meant for non-vvti like i was explaining earlier but we can Kind of get it in there to work on the VVTi. Pretty nice setup if you ask us. We gotta install this guy to relocate his reservoir for radiator. Joe did the full interior. Voila, it's back to normal. Joe likes to fully take out the interior and put it back in in the Supra within the same week. That already happened. <laughs> um, oh, what else did we do? We modified this like we talk about. We just weld that shut. This car will be easier to make the downpipe, so this won't really interfere much. So that's a plus sign because it's using this log type manifold, the cast one, which if you guys are wondering, these work great for mid-range, low-end torque. But if you were going for like, no, realistically, if you're going even over a thousand horsepower, I have two buddies that run these. They, they kind of poured them out there. And then there's less back pressure once you poured them a little bit and they're making like 1250 horsepower. So there's actually no downside to this. But when you're doing like over 600 horsepower, you have to do what they did with the wastegate there, weld one on down below. So you have more relief because it would be too much back pressure if you didn't do a second wastegate. That's pretty much all the parts I can update you guys on at the moment. We will have the motor in probably an hour from now. We have a drive shaft on order for this one. Powerhouse Racing set up single piece drive shaft. Coil radiator on order for this one. That's not here yet, but overall it's making really quick progress. We're pretty excited about this. Oh, back here we might need to do another one of these 90 degrees. And then if we did that, we could put his fuel pressure sensor there. This car is gonna run a pro EFI for the ECU. And he's hoping to do like flex fuel setup so that he can sometimes go for 650 horsepower or whatever his max on E85 is. Sometimes be just on pump gas. Flex fuel is pretty cool. That's the update, but I just wanted to make sure you didn't miss that that motor is going in today. I am about to head to Hollinger, USA. Luckily, it's only like 20 minutes away because we live in the central location of all car stuff, it feels like. So we're gonna head there and we're gonna get the RD6S gearbox, six speed sequential for Rory Supra. Pretty pumped about this. Hollinger's a super good transmission, driveline component company from Australia, but they're a little out of my price range, but Rory um, wanted to make that investment for his Supra, so he did. It's gonna be a really epic Supra, so we're gonna go pick up that gearbox. I don't know if we can film inside there. We'll see, and then we'll bring it back here get ready to start putting it in Rory Supra. We do need a clutch, so we can't put it in right away, but it's gonna be cool to see this transmission. It's here! <laughs> Hollinger. Oh, man. This is Rory's Hollinger, RD6S. Oh my gosh, okay. I gotta go. Just opened up the shifter. Looks cool, but just kinda like a shaft, I guess. A little Gear display. Indicator. Mm. Wow. Okay, so the one thing we're not 100% about is why this is offset a little bit. They just didn't say it would be like that. 
which would put it towards the passenger side of the car more, which would mean we'd need to bend this a little bit and kick it, or they need to supply a bent one. This is direct fit on a Supra, just falls in place. I think it will, but we don't want to have to cut the trans tunnel at all, because it should be like centered right here. We'll find out soon enough. We gotta get a clutch for this. Somehow the input shaft wasn't supplied with it either. We don't know, but we'll figure it out and let you guys know. But I'm pretty sure this is the transmission from here to here, if I remember right. And this is all just bell housing. Really long, it's crazy. Saturday morning. No one's here yet. They're coming. I don't know exactly how many days till winter jam, but we gotta finish that practice car. Crap, it's in the back. Oh, Mark's here. What's up, Mark? We need it to be on one of these lifts, so it looks like we're moving around a bunch of crap. Unfortunately, we have this big truck in our way, but the cool thing about the truck is it's got a 2J in it now. Woo! Tight squeeze, but it's in there. This is gonna be a fun truck. Joe got the motor mounts and trans mount. We pulled the other motor out of it, the other V6. We're gonna have to figure out how, the shifter's like right about here, but we gotta like bring it forward. We're gonna have to decide this stuff later. We gotta get it up and off of this jack stand, out, Corvette out, super out, super out, super out, then my super up, and then shuffling everything around. Oh my gosh. Okay, we'll be with you guys shortly. Practice cars on the lift, we're working on it. Mark's here, Beach is here. One last detail. This is Juan, he hates cameras. He likes Supras. I don't hate them, I'm just camera shy. So he, you guys need to help Juan by buying his Mark IV Supra, which every person pretty much wants a Mark IV Supra at some point in their life. His is for sale, because he needs to, he's doing a fundraiser to make Supras great again right there. No, it's not a fundraiser. <laughs> he, just, he just can't have so many Supras, maybe. He wants to make one really, really cool one. And so he's gonna have to say bye to this one. So don't forget, guys, it's for sale. Comment below, and then I could get you like his contact. There's a couple other details we need to tell you about, but if you're interested, let us know. Okay, so weird thinking. Put two of these bulkheads, so it's like quick disconnect style, so you can remove the engine harness. The way my current Supra is, just a punched hole through the firewall because it's like a budget nice wire harness that I did. I used the right materials, but I wasn't able to do these. And then these are from an airplane because this guy builds airplanes. Then we're gonna use the, um, these are called Hall Effect, right? Yeah. When it's like not magnetic for my cam and crank. Powerhouse Racing sells this. See, Powerhouse Racing. Um, other companies sell it. Drift Motion had the ones that I have on my car right now. I use a Hall Effect cam sensor, but not a crank, so it'll be three instead of two wires. But then the benefit of that when you use one of these is that you don't have to use shielded wire. You can still use shielded wire, it's fine, but you don't have to use, um, it doesn't get affected by noise interference, which is like a huge thing on high horsepower cars with the coil pack and it's electrical noise if you're like what is he talking about so it makes electrical noise and that electrical noise will interrupt the signal the ECU is trying to read for cam and crank vice versa one or the other both you never know and then you're like why is my car breaking up at 680 horsepower and I thought I could make a thousand because Little details like that matter once you get into that crazy horsepower range. If we use that plate back there, we can put two of these disconnects. That will be too close to the downpipe, huh? It's why I only could have one, maybe. My other car has that same plate. Huh? No, maybe not. You got room. You're wondering what this is? We're doing a boost leak test. So it sticks out like that. That's pretty far. That's pretty far. I have 90 degree strain release. Let me see. What are the other ones that were like this? These are different, huh? Those are auto sport connectors. Because then they click, they don't twist. They're quarter turn or whatever. Yeah. Should we try that? Or those are harder to do? I just gotta find them in all the... Those ones. Hmm. What if we did that same thing right there? Would that work? If we cut and welded like a little patch right there? They come out right next to the booster? Mm-hmm. And then you can put two, three right here. But then what does it look like on the inside? Then it has to go up and around the gas pedal. 
So many thoughts, people. Okay, we're gonna keep planning. We'll update you guys in a little bit. So we're making more progress, but the boys are here to drop off a Z, and there's some exciting stuff. Kind of messed up. Okay, let's go check this out. <laughs> it's stuck. It's toast. <laughs> hey, Sean, what are you doing? Are you guys breaking stuff? Yeah. So he was like, yeah. like it was just spit. Up and it shot the ramps out. And we heard it, and we're like, huh, doesn't sound right. And I was like, oh, they probably forgot to put the ramps up, and maybe it's like the ramps drug against like the metal grate right there. But then we like don't hear the ramps fixing, and we're like, huh. And then you walk in. It's, t <laughs> Look at that. it's gonna slide back. Hey, someone hold the brake, because it's gonna, as soon as you do that, it's gonna wanna slide back. You have to hold the foot brake, though, for the front. This is cool. I wonder, like, it just hit frame, or did it hit anything important? Very close to the fuel lines, but missed it. Probably, right? Hope. Well, you'll find out in a second. That probably did get really close to the fuel lines. Yeah, isn't that, like, right where it is? And it's on, like, the fuel tank. And... Oh, it hit the fuel tank. Yeah. No! No, it's not leaking, so I think you're good. Your hand was under the tire, and if that would have fallen, there goes your wrist. Oh my god, I gotta get out of here. I just blew it on my eyes. He couldn't see. Does it have an LSD? Yeah. It's welded? No. Hmm. <laughs> what do you guys think? I like ISs. All right, we gotta go back inside. <laughs> Say bye to the boys, Sean and Shelby.